Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the Anita Bass Podcast. My name is Anita Bass, your host, and as per usual, and as always, this episode is brought to you by Wake to Us. And today, we have a very important, no, a wonderful interview, as per usual, with the wonderful Diana. So this episode is in relation to following your feeling and acting on your feeling and being happy with less. I've always been quite good at following my feeling and just being like, I feel like I need to do this. And with absolutely no logic behind it, no financial logic, no step logic, no, this fits into any plan in my life. You're fucking nuts, my poor mother would say. <laughs> Not fucking, she doesn't swear. Um, with no logic at all, just being like, I don't know, I can't explain it, I just need to go. Um, and when I've mentioned this in podcasts before, that's something that people have brought up, just like, wow, I've never thought to act on that. Like, it's super important that people know that that is something that you should listen to. And I feel like it is because it's the thing inside you, which if you don't listen, it screams at you until you do, or then it kills itself off eventually. And then you're like, ah, oh, I wish I did. And there's nothing on the other side of going after that feeling. You know what I mean? So this lovely lady I met when I was in, in Austin, Texas, after spring break tour, then I went to Miami, and then I went straight to Austin. She is a very unique, wonderful person who just creates her own opportunities just because how outgoing and careless she is. Like, she has no shame. She talks to anyone, and that's such a wonderful way to be. Um, so when I met her... I'll read the description. Giving up her corporate career, letting go of material possessions and leaving the matrix to experience how to live more with less. With a one-way ticket to Tulum, Mexico and life packed in two bags, Diana followed her heart to help build a school for the local kids. Today we speak to her about the importance of following your feeling, being happy with less and living based on what makes you feel good as opposed to what others think looks good. Diana is somebody who dares to ask for the impossible and always thinks you can dream bigger. So when I met her, she was just leaving and she was just kind of figuring it all out and she wanted to go after this and she knew what she wanted and she was just taking the steps. So it's wonderful to see her actually fucking do it and how much she has grown as a person and how happy you can see that she is and how in turn what she is doing is affecting other people around her positively, which would not have happened had she sold herself short and just done what she always thought she had to do and stayed where she was. Yeah. So I'm very excited to talk to her, but yeah, she's just such a unique and crazy and wonderful person in the sense of like when I met her, <laughs> so I was really sick because I went to Austin because I wanted to go to a gym out there and I wanted to go to a record store, but I was so sick from Cancun and then partying in Miami that my body was like, no. So I checked into my hostel and then she just came in and it was just her and I at the in the room at the time and she just started talking to me and then we got to talking for fucking ever and then she was like, do you want to go out? Like, we'll go have a drink somewhere, blah, blah, blah. And I was hell sick. I was like, one drink. And we did have one drink and then went to Voodoo Donuts, which is famous for its bacon maple donut. And then she was like, tomorrow morning I'm going to go – um, canoeing on the river in Austin. Can't remember the name, but it's like one of the top things to do. And I was like, look, I really can't be fucked doing anything. I'm probably just going to lay in bed because I'm hell sick. And I like exploring, but I'm not one to consciously make an effort to go do hikes and stuff like that. Don't know why, I just don't. Um, and she's like, oh, do you want to come? And I was like, trying to be polite, like, not really. And then in the morning... So I'm not a morning person. We didn't even talk about me going with her, but I'm not a morning person. I fucking, it takes a very long time for me to get up and be okay. No one should or would wake me up. No partner, no friends, no nothing. So in the morning, I'm asleep <laughs> and I just feel someone just like, Anita, Anita, like, come on, we're going to go. And I was in my head just like, who the fuck? <laughs> Is it? I don't even know her. I, why is she waking me up? I'm not going. She's like, come on, come on. And I was like, I, I just don't want to go. Like, I feel really sick still. And she's like, but it'll be fun. Like, I think you should come canoeing. And I'm like, nah, like, I really don't want to. And I was just rolling over and in my head thinking, why is she waking me up? Who does she think she is to wake? She's a stranger. What? <laughs> and I was just like, and then after a while, she's like, okay. 
you're just going to stay in bed all day then and and you're not going to have a fun day and this is something you should do in Austin and I think you would have a good time if you came with me. And I was like, nah. And then after a while and then I kind of woke up as she was getting ready and then I was like, I'll come. And then she's like, I knew you would. <laughs> and then like as I got ready, she like grabbed my arm and like skipped down the street with me and she's like, I knew, I knew you'd have fun. Like it's going to be a good day. And it was, granted, it was a fucking great day. And then the next day she like took me on a hike and stuff with some other people she rounded up from the hostel. And she's just such a go-getting person who would do that type of stuff with everyone. And someone like me needs someone like her to make me do shit as well. And I'm so glad I went and then just sleep all day. But yeah, that's the type of person she is and she just creates opportunity and people we meet and she's just such an open book and just talks and blah, blah, blah. She's fucking phenomenal. So we're going to get her on the phone today and speak about what it's like to now be living the feeling that she followed and being based in Tulum, Mexico. Alrighty, guys. So as promised, we have Diana here. Diana, how are you? I am doing great. So happy to see you. It's been a while, but it feels like it was actually yesterday. So, <laughs> Literally. Back in Austin, not too long ago. Um, so I've already told the people a little bit about you and how we met and how I think you're such a different and unique person. So I think getting straight into it, I will just ask, where are you in the world right now and what are you doing? <laughs> I am in the vortex of uh, magic. It's at Tulum on the Caribbean Sea, so can't complain. <laughs> <laughs> this little magical village that not too many people know about, but when they come, they just, yeah, stay here forever. <laughs> and they don't want to leave, of course. Right. So the last time when I spoke to you, you just had the idea and the feeling that you wanted to go to Tulum. So what made mm -hmm. you act on this and why were you so crazy to uproot your whole entire life just for a feeling? Right. Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> just like I was saying, I was um, in Tulum for vacation and um, so much magic happened here for me. My spiritual journey just took off and uh, as I was working with children for a long time, I just saw so much potential here as well because kids don't have real real schools, opportunities, and whatnot. And so after my vacation, I went back to Chicago to my corporate job, to the crazy pandemic, to uh, people fighting over toilet paper. And so I was just sitting in my apartment as we were working from home and just kind of dying to be back in Tulum. And uh, when I saw what people did during the pandemic here in Tulum, just came together, were helping each other out. There was so many different projects to get involved with. And uh, I started donating some money for some of these projects and just kind of transcending already and visualizing myself here from Chicago. And then long story short, eventually I lost my corporate job and I was just like, peace out. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Randy, thank you for helping me make that decision. And then after that, I went to Europe for um, two months to see my family. And so it was kind of sad because my grandpa was about to turn 77. And the whole year I kept seeing number 77 and me and my grandpa were so connected. And on the day of his birthday, he called me and he just said, honey, I love you. I just want you to follow your heart and your dreams and have some money in your pocket. And it was funny because my grandpa lived and worked in Germany for a long time and was a very strict man. And I just said, Grandpa, what mountain did you go on to meditate? <laughs> this is not you. <laughs> My little cutie. And yeah, he just told us that he's not really feeling well. And um, we couldn't really go to see him because my dad was just starting a new job in Germany. And because of all the restrictions, my grandpa lived in Croatia and we were in Serbia. So couldn't go and see him. Long story short, I fly into Chicago. My cab drops me off in front of my apartment. I go on my phone and I see 77% on my battery. <laughs> and the day I heard the news, actually, my grandpa passed away. Oh, my goodness. That quick as uh, well. 
Yes, and so that pulled the trigger. Just his last words were ringing in my ears, like, follow your heart and your dreams and have some money in your pocket. And I was sitting in my apartment, and I'm like, I don't need any of this. And in three days, I just listed my place for sublease and started donating and selling all of my material possessions. And, uh, yeah. Oh yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> I just did it. No, that is, that's that's. Oh, that's dope. And we were actually talking about this before we started recording. But yeah, that contrast, I guess, from like seeing everyone in Salon in Mexico having absolutely nothing and just getting catapulted straight back into your corporate job with these big buildings and everything and everyone having everything but miserable and not helping each other in any way. You would have just been like, what the fuck? <laughs> and just this living in fear, you know, like, will I lose my job? What's going to happen? Like, I guess I'm that person that just can't live on anyone else's terms or with that uncertainty. Like I need decisions, you know, if I don't have my job, it's okay. But then what's next? You know, I have to have at least this vision of my life so I can manifest it. Yeah. And then beautiful when when that spiritual journey took off and just me connecting more with myself and meditating every day like that's where all the answers really came because I dropped in my heart I was not living off of that fear I was like what do I want yeah. because anything possible honestly even with restrictions or whatnot I just want people to know that whatever they envision for themselves is possible yeah, no, that's crazy. That is, that is so true and that leads perfectly into my next question, which is people are often too scared to act on the feeling and that internal voice because it seems so stupid and not logical and in their brain if I can't make money or if it's not blah, blah, blah. So how does it feel to you to act on what your heart is pulling you to do and what have you learned? Like, as you say, you're just doing to doing. So, like, how does that feel? Like most people looking in would be like, well, what's your plan? Where's the money? Blah, blah, blah. You're like, I don't know. It's just... Feels, yeah. How does that make you feel now as a human mm. following that as opposed to maybe in your office job? Oh, it's just so exciting. I, I guess I'm an adrenaline junkie and I just love not to know what's going to happen. So taking that leap of faith and especially if you're sitting down with yourself and something just keeps popping in your mind, like something that just sets your heart like on fire and makes you so happy like how can you ignore that feel whatever it is however silly it seems to other people because yes I couldn't talk about these things with my friends and family they were like Mexico you're <laughs> gonna get killed you're gonna get robbed you have a green card they're gonna like ask you for your papers because they want to move to America and I'm like People know not everyone wants to live in America. <laughs> like, for me, it was just so exciting because I saw, like I said, so much potential. And um, luckily, financially, I was secure at the time. But even if I wasn't, I would still make it work because I knew it was like now or never. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I left so much behind. Like, my failed marriage, my corporate careers, like I've done everything that I wanted. I just reached that like cap, like that limit. Uh-huh. I accomplished all of that, but none of that made me really happy. So how can I follow the feeling? <laughs> yeah. That is so cool. And it's so important for people to hear as well, like the fact, because that's what happens. It keeps coming to you, it keeps coming to you, and you know it's what mm -hmm. fills you up and people keep – ignoring it and I remember in one of my first podcasts I talked about it like how I just it was just a feeling and a feeling and there's nothing backing to it and then even when I was needed to get out of debt I went to Melbourne on a feeling like in debt in a suitcase and then I was making good money and then I was just on a feeling I was done and when I said that like someone was like wow I've never like that's super important people actually act on that and I'm like it's the only thing that you really can act on because if not you're just there frustrated like During the pandemic, you see how many people is out there for you. Yeah. Because many people see me as, as the strong one. So there is no questions of how are you or when I lost my job. 
And it was my friends always complaining about stupid things like, oh my gosh, I gained weight during the pandemic. I did this and this. And I'm like, well, then, then maybe you should work out. And so I'm that like also harsh friend and always honest. And then that can trigger a lot of people. So there's always a lot of commotion in my relationships. It's like, can you handle this? You know, because <laughs> I will always tell you the truth. <laughs> Confidence comes with bluntness. No, we need we need people yes. like that. <laughs> a Sagittarius moon. So that that's the thing too. You know, Sagittarius. <laughs> are known for being super blunt so with me it's like what you see is what you get you know yeah and people can't believe that because many of us are like hiding something or pretending or shallow or it's like just be who you are yeah and then you will attract your soul tribe like the way you and me met like Wow, two people completely, you would say, <laughs> different. And then it's like, Anita, I'm dragging you out. Let's go to the adventure. I explained <laughs> like, that in the beginning. I was like, this uh-huh. random, like, no one wakes me up. I'm not a morning person. Like, my friends right. wouldn't even, or like, a partner. And you're just like, morning. There. Morning. And in my head, I was like, who the fuck <laughs> is this person I just met touching me, wanting me to go, I'm sick. I'm, and then eventually you did and you like That's grabbed right. my hand and we like, let's go. I knew you'd come. And then it was like a great day. <laughs> you just needed your Starbucks, girl. I remember you got large coffee and it's like, <laughs> now I'm good to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's good. You need people like this. No. So how has yeah. your life benefited? How has your life benefited from following what you feel you should do as opposed to what other people are telling mm-hmm. you to do? I'm sure you're already in a roundabout answer, but. Can't say that I didn't have challenges, honestly. It's been super challenging with my family, coming to Tulum, even having my heart broken here um, because I met a man last year who I I loved so much. And uh, yeah, it's been super challenging. But again, in, in all of those challenges, you find that resilience and strength because on that other side of that fear and then loneliness in a way, there is so many rewards. Like I wake up every morning. I mean, it's sunny. I hear birds chirping and it goes back to those um, little things in life, really to that gratitude for just being able to wake up in this paradise that I created for myself. So that's why it's so rewarding because I just found meaning in so many little things that that drive me through life now mm-hmm. when there is so much certainty and uh like we saw there is no security or stability in anything really like yeah. anything can be taken <laughs> taken from you overnight like my my grandpa passing away my best friend committed suicide so you know that was like she was 30 and i said we just have this day, you know, you wake up and it's like, make the best of it. Follow the feeling throughout your day. Like what makes you happy that day? Like set your heart on fire little by little and and then everything will come together because you will radiate that beautiful frequency out to the world. And really those who are meant to be a part of your pet, like they will show up and opportunities and everything you wish for will find you but you gotta have that at least vision of your life and like you know how you wish to live and and what your values are so you can align with your soul tribe yeah that's beautiful that is beautiful (laughs) and i said before and then the synchronicities and that all pairs up (laughs) yeah i've often talked about this before or even if i use myself as an example when i never used to say awake tours with stuff because I thought that the business wasn't big enough or I couldn't. So people would be like, what do you do for work? Oh, I just work in an office. And then when I was like, fuck it, no, I am a business owner and blah, blah, blah. And then I'd be like, I do this. And then from then on, because I was like walking, talking in the existence of that person, people would be like, oh, my friend does this. Oh, I have a DJ here. Oh, this person can help you with this. And when I'd go to other countries and say, like, oh, and then autom- and then I was living and walking as the person who I always wanted to do and be, whereas I was yeah. the only one fucking myself over and not allowing it to happen until I was like no and as you said and then you're just on the path and it doesn't matter if you're alone because it's just you doing your thing and the people who want attract and those who won't get it fall off and that's fine because they won't get it 
because we get so caught up in that, like what other people are doing yeah. or uh, putting labels on ourselves, like, like needing to know the answer. If someone asks us, what are you doing? And for me, it was quite the opposite. It was like, I'm becoming, yeah. I want to be nothing and everything. So I can just be in this world, like, like that serving my purpose and my purpose is that el camino which this lady who's a shaman told me to just travel around and shed my life light on others and i'm like that's who i am i'm a little scary or something and i'm okay i'm finally living in my whimsical world of like not having to be like a businesswoman or that doesn't define me like yeah at all that's amazing. And I think that's a fucking wicked point as well, which I haven't really even thought about that. Because, yeah, sometimes you think if you're not aiming for something or you can't, like, label it, you not that you are, but you feel pointless. Or if people are like, what do you do? And to me, that's my – I fucking hate that question because it's like it doesn't matter what I do and you're going to judge me. But, yeah, it's like what do you do? And some people are like, uh, uh, uh. It's like, no, I'm just doing and being and I experience and I move and I experience and I move. And so many people try and make you feel like bad for that as well. Like, oh, you'll settle down one day and you're like, "Uh." and half of you people who say that aren't really even happy. You just want me to say something like because it means I'm older now. But like, oh, you grow up. But like, but I'm happy as hell. Right. All of those expectations also like for my family, for example, wow, you're 30 now. Like, what do you want? Like my mom was expecting me to. But just come to Germany, have your own car and your own apartment. Like, that defines my level of success. And, you know, like I mentioned with my failed marriage, like, when are you going to find a man or or get married again or have children? And it's like, none of those questions matter to me anymore. Of course, I'm thinking about it. You know, I would love to be a mother and, and stuff like that. But right now, it's time for myself. Like, yeah. how can we be a little more selfish in a way and just constantly practice that self-love so we can be better humans for ourselves and others, our families, and, and, and serve as an example of, like, what's possible when you just, like, let it be like that. Yeah, that's beautiful. And also, when you do have kids, they're more inclined to watch you live your life. And as you think, they would always, I don't know if you... <laughs> There'd be like kids at school with like, and there'd be a cool mom, someone's mom who's just living there, everything. And there's always that adult <laughs> that you remember. So like, I feel like say if you had kids, they would, that would be better for them. And it is just to have a mom that's fully in their own, has evolved, is there and is there as a teacher to nurture them as opposed to like, eh, how's this money, blah, blah, blah. Like you're doing mm-hmm. them a service in the future as well. <laughs> well, sure. yes, because those black sheep of our family, we see that we are the ones who are breaking those generational curses and trauma and everything, basically from our ancestors, like all that conditioning from the survival mode to us like thriving, you know, and wanting our kids to grow up in a, you know, loving environment where they will not be these little fucked up humans (laughs) who are constantly, seriously searching for them because our parents conditioned us to act like this to do this and whatnot so I said you know I want my kids to be wild and free to to learn to appreciate every little creature like to eat organic foods to live in nature and um, like as I worked with kids like the school systems are like falling apart and I'm like so happy that that I really took my time and had this patience to wait for this, what I call new earth era and the age of Aquarius, where now we're just like that. We want to live in a community and go back to the old ways, mm-hmm. how we grew up, you know, having land and, and growing our veggies and knowing where our food comes from, etc. Yeah, I, th- I think that's, yeah, that would be ideal. I even think the way, like, the community raises the kids, the elders, and everyone together and their stories, not we live in a family and then when we hit 18, we all have to fuck off and struggle with a mortgage, buy, and we don't help each other. Like, it's like, when was that a good idea? (laughs) It's like slavery, you know? You're you're slaved up to your credit card debt, to to your student loans, to your car, to your apartment. There's so many bills, 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 bills. And I was always like, 
like I said, how can I live more with less and like literally have my bank account and my phone and just minimalistic lifestyle so I can be free Yeah. Um, from that, from that matrix, honestly, that that's just giving us a sense of false uh, security. Yeah, exactly. And crippling <laughs> anxiety. <laughs> Complete, yeah. It is. Alrighty. So I always say to people, there's no such thing as failure, only lessons. So many people wouldn't have done what you've done, moving countries multiple times, etc., because they think it may not work out. And if it doesn't, then they're a failure. But to them, I would say that just rids them of an experience and they only get to live their current life forever and they already know what they're going to mm. get. So you personally, I want to ask, what's your opinion on failure or not doing something because being scared of failing? Mm. Even that word just triggers me so much because <laughs> what is a failure you know it's again just that label that people would tell you when you were younger aha if you don't succeed in soccer like you're a failure (laughs) and so that's the condition so for me honestly there is no such thing as failing like yes maybe I failed in according to somebody else's like how to say yeah of it when when you met me I mean I lost my job I separated from my ex-husband I I lived with a toxic person who caused me like physical trauma and I was like what I would call that rock bottom but for me it wasn't a failure for me it was a beautiful opportunity to say not God why are you doing this to me but like God what are you trying to teach me and it was teaching honestly to finally start appreciating myself loving myself unconditionally and to start following my heart and traveling like it started by booking those small trips to austin then to new orleans and then my journey just took off and i started like upgrading my life i said i will never live with another person so i got my own apartment took that risk and just kept taking risks in life for that higher reward because I think the universe, God, call it whatever, sees what kind of humans we are and what we have been through. And then life is not just survival. So we will get our reward, but you got to take that risk first. Yeah. Now that's beautiful. And as you said, rock bottom, but really it pivoted you to Mm. all of this. Like if you were like, oh, poor me, sucking your sorrow, or if you hung in the relationship uh-huh. just to hang in it, like, you would still be there, not literally travelling through to Lum, got about to, you're thinking about going to India, now you're going to Colorado, do your training, and you're, like, happy. Like, it's a failure to some, or maybe to your mum, oh, I've, I'm no longer my marriage, oh, you're a failure, and you take that on, if you were to take that on, but it's not a failure, it's a fucking redirect. If it was meant to be, it wouldn't, it didn't. Okay, cool. Um, completely. <laughs> And then my life is my responsibility. I said, you just mind your business and let me be. Like, don't induce me with your projections or fear. Yeah. That's all I meant. Like, always setting, you know, healthy boundaries with people. Um, that's yeah. really important in life. So that we can literally keep following the, 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 the path. Yeah, exactly. And not let somebody maybe potentially get in your head and sway you and say, you can't do that. <laughs> Because you obviously don't have proof that you can do it because you've never done it before. And that's what I say. It's hard to be like, yes, I can. And they're like, well, what's your proof? Nothing. Fuck, you're right. And they're like, well, this is proof to work. Money and house. You're like, no, I just, I can't explain it, but I'm going. (laughs) And that's weird as hell. (laughs) Oh, love it. Alrighty, so you've moved to a few new countries on your own. Um, What is the Mm -hmm. biggest struggle you have found of moving to new places, communities, if there is even any? I think honestly working with people yeah. like when I lived in the US with my host families or when I just moved to Tulum I said okay I've lived uh, by myself for so long you know I'm just gonna find roommate and then I did and then my first month in Tulum was uh fuck like why did I do this you know my roommates again did not resonate with me and uh we were just like constantly triggering each other but at the same time it goes back to that I'm not a victim of this 
I can always change my situation. And I think Tulum, my first month was teaching me everything that I did not want to align with here, <laughs> which was beautiful because then I made a decision. I woke up one morning and I said, I'm getting a new place. And everyone's like, how are you going to get a new place? You don't even have Facebook marketplace and this, that. And I said, I'll find it. I know what I want. And so <laughs> my friend from Chicago came to Tulum. We sat on my scooter and I'm like, let's go to Siang Khan to this nature forest preserve, which is so freaking far. <laughs> it's the two of us scooter. And as we're like, Writing, there was this man waving at us. Hey, girls, come to my boat tour or whatnot. And I said, no, thank you. I'm actually looking for an apartment. And he said, I'm actually renting too. And so that was like really? my change. Like I just showed up at his place, take it. And I've been here ever since. And oh my it's God. like <laughs> the power of manifestation. And just that positive fucking feeling, like, I got this. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. It's just like, dare to ask. Dare to ask and put it out there. You never know how it's going to manifest. Honestly, like I said, the universe just has its ways of bringing all that you want <laughs> to you in this are like crazy it's like here i am and i'm like okay thank you sir <laughs> and no worries and now i live here <laughs> yeah this is my apartment you know with what's considered in tulum to be luxury with like washing machine and dryer and outdoor space and everyone's like how and i'm like i don't know i just put it out there <laughs> Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> that's just the way yeah. your life rolls all the time. That's just, that's just mm -hmm. you. Literally, the conversations you strike up, all these stories you tell me, like, how? But it is just, I think I was saying it to you before offline, like, that's just you as a person. Like, what you did to me, like, hi. And then you're like, come on, come with me. Like, I would never <laughs> do that to someone, you know, like, I don't know why, I'm just a different person, but that itself creates so many opportunities, like, right. to you. And I remember whatever other story you were telling me last time we spoke, how you, like, made friends because someone was walking behind you and you're like, oh, trying to catch up or something you said to them. I don't <laughs> yeah. know. Yeah. And you're like, and then we started talking and then I was like, I would never say that. But like you oh. do that in every situation or like when you got in your taxi driver and was like, do you meditate? And he's like, yeah, I do actually two hours a day. And you're like, so we talked about that. And I'm like, I, w that, I would never think to ask this of a grown man. Do you meditate? Yeah. No. <laughs> right. It's amazing because honestly, I have no shame. I'm like, you what's don't. the worst answer? that you're gonna get it's like no okay and it's really funny because because like what you said you just talk to these random people honestly we don't know who's connected to who at the end of the day we're all connected to me the most bizarre thing was when I met you and then I went to New Orleans and like my first day there I meet these three Aussies who were like you know Anita Bates we just partied in Cancun together and I was like I was just with her. That's so and, random. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, so random. I love those things. And so in Tulum, actually, this is such a powerful vortex. Like I was working on this project to build a school from scratch for kids. And so I've been like doing events, raising donations, awareness and money. And we just set the foundation for the school. And that was it. And I was like, but that's not enough for me. Like, I'm leaving in a month and I really want to see this school happening. And so long story short, I bought a lemonade from a little girl on the street who was like so captivated like by me. And she was like, can I share your number with my mom? Like, sometimes we need a nanny and you're amazing. And I'm like, sure. <laughs> And so I give my phone to this kid and like next thing you know, her mom reaches out and she's like, hey, I need to meet you, blah, blah, blah. I tell the mom about my project with the kids in school. Next thing you know, her partner works with Bitcoin and he brought some crazy rich guy and they're like, how much do you need? And we were like, 3,000? Okay, 10,000. You got it. <laughs> now we got funding for the school out of this, like, random situation. Nice. And I'm just like, I'm just like, I fucking believe in miracles. Like, life is a miracle itself. There is so much magic 
that like I cannot dream less than than Everything. huge and big. Like yeah. you know? <laughs> that is the best. You're you're amazing. You're amazing. Your life is a book. Anyway. Uh, Right, so my final question to you is advice uh -huh. to your younger self and what you wish you would have known in relation Aww. to anything. I thank you. I love that one. It's been a lot of inner child healing because as I'm such a little like empath and I want everyone to be happy, I guess the advice to my younger me was like, don't try to help everyone because yeah. some of them like, were rejecting that help and I was um, pouring out of my own empty cup to, you know, make make others happy, to make these kids that I was working happy, these families, my husband. I literally got sick, you know, at some point. And so I just wish that I was a little more, like, gentle on myself and then really loving myself more rather than, let me just drown and try to <laughs> but then both like you know <laughs> sing <laughs> yeah that's so important and I think something everyone kind of can probably relate to as well like just being told to like shut up and stop crying and stop whinging and just do and then when you're with someone as like loving and people person as you you just say yes yes I hope you da 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 until it gets to a point where yeah your body's even sick and you're like Fuck, yeah. I didn't realize this is hell. <laughs> and then and then people take advantage of you in a way, and then you can be the victim, you know, be like, oh, poor me, people take advantage of me. But it's like, at the end of the day, I allowed that. Yeah, you let them. Yeah. Exactly. So I learned those lessons when I was younger, and now I'm like, nobody can fuck with me anymore, honestly. Mm -hmm. Because one settled for less than what I think I deserve yeah that's it <laughs> you know done done boundaries uh. done. <laughs> Alrighty, well that's all of my questions for you oh. I, I feel like we've we've actually been talking for quite a bit but I feel like it just started but I just want to say thank you so <laughs> much thank you for sharing and for your time um whenever I talk to you I'm just so energized and I'm like anything's mm -hmm. possible so like, <laughs> ah. literally I'm well, just I like yeah wait. I can't wait to, to start teaching Kundalini so so we can do like a little Zoom meeting and <laughs> yes. I will be happy to, to share this light with others, uh, even with some of your listeners because Definitely. we're all one, honestly. It's a beautiful community and what you're doing as well. Like I'm so, so proud of you and uh, we're not homeless like we were talking in Austin. <laughs> like, no, look at us. We're still like freaking smiling and still like those silly two girls like okay life is still <laughs> like, <laughs> and it's a fucking adventure isn't it? <laughs> at least it's not boring at least it's not boring right at least it's not boring and if we had that margarita to cheers now i would be even happier <laughs> <laughs> all righty well thank you thank you from the people um I will connect all your socials and everything. We look forward to seeing you go through all of your training and all your kundalini and no doubt speak to you in the future. And, yeah, hopefully some of people will connect through to you because this is something of yeah. very big value as well. So thank you for coming on today. Thank you, thank Anita. You. All right. Okay, bye.